Our next speaker is widely regarded as one of the top principal figures in the cryptocurrency world, especially when we're talking about the cryptocurrency adoption in China. So let's explore his vision for the future of blockchain, its regulation, and also discuss how to grow developer community across the globe. In conversation with the Wall Street Journal's Neanda Salvatera, please welcome to the stage the founder of NEO, the benchmark of Chinese cryptocurrency and a world leader in the blockchain industry, Da Hongfei. Hi. And we have Doug Hofei in the house from NEO, and I am very excited to speak to you. How are you? Uh, good, good. I'm also very excited to be here. Yeah. This is my first time in Portugal. Yeah. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. So um, I know that probably everyone in here knows what blockchain is, but I was just talking to, to mm -hmm. Da, and I, I said to myself, you know, this is not a, a private club. Blockchain is not a, a private club. It's something that I think the people who are pushing it want to make accessible to the entire world. So we're going to give Da like a couple of minutes yeah. to explain what it is just for the audience here and as well as globally. What is blockchain? Uh, I think the audience here <laughs> probably has some uh, kind of a technology background. So I, will explore, ex I won't uh, go into the details of those techni technological details. Uh, my understanding that blockchain is at first it's a, it's a software. And then it's also a platform. So you can build your decentralized applications on top of the platform. And also, it's not just a centralized platform that is managed by some party. It's an open platform. It's more like a protocol. You can follow the protocol, build your own implementation, and connect to the network. It's an open network. And last, it's also, it is also called the Internet of Value. Uh, today, since the internet is good at uh, uh, trans transferring message or information, but it's uh, a blockchain is good at delivering values. And last, I also believe that uh, blockchain is more than a technology. It's a new institutional tool, a new institutional paradigm. We can use blockchain, the spirit of blockchain, to have new ways to collaborate at a very uh, bigger level than today's collaboration. Hmm. So to, to put that in language that I would understand, I did understand, but mm -hmm. is this guy thinks trust is so passe, right? Yeah. We should take trust out of transactions, that's what you're saying? Uh, I'm always saying that a trust is very expensive. And uh, besides of that, it, it is also very time consuming. So if imagine you want to if you want to send a message from any point in the, in, the, in, the, in the world, it only takes milliseconds to do that. But if you want to send a message that involves with trust, let's say I want to send you $10 across the border, you need a trusted third party to facilitate that. And uh, the cost is very high. Uh, the time it costs, also costs delay. So with blockchain technology, the trust is built in with technology, with open source, with the protocol. So it will dramatically lower the trust, uh, lower the cost of trust, and speed everything up. Got it. Yeah. Now, b beyond, you know, I'm always thinking about mm -hmm. money. <laughs> so beyond sending money, what, you know, if you can name one or two transactions now that, mm -hmm. that blockchain can be applied to that are interesting, what would those be? Yeah, there are many interesting applications of blockchain technology. Uh, the most interesting one would be gaming. There are a lot of uh, there are many games that are these days are developed on top of blockchain or utilizing blockchain technology. Uh, I'm thinking um, maybe in the next few years we will see very large scale games similar to Into the Sky or a, a Star Citizen that will build a parallel universe. And the monetary system, the economic system in the, in the universe, the new universe, will be used uh, with uh, blockchain technology. Got it. How yeah. many gamers in the house? <laughs> All right, some. All right, does that sound exciting? A parallel universe sounds interesting yeah. to me. Um, now, um, 
what's the biggest difference between Neo and Ethereum, which I know that you're often compared to, uh -huh. <laughs> to your chagrin, but I still want to hear you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, there are, there are many differences. Uh, from a technical point of view, um, we, we, are, we have different consensus mechanism. Uh, the smart contract system is different. You can, you can use like C Sharp, JavaScript, or mature those languages to write smart contracts on Neo. Uh, and also, uh, the economic model is different. We have two tokens. We have a dual token system uh, inside of Neo. So that's uh, from the technical point of view. But from other, uh, I, but uh, the main difference, the most important difference, boils down to the design philosophy. Um, at Neo, we we call us a pro programmatic uh, idealist. So the vision probably is the same, but how we reach from today's place to to our vision to our ideal uh, place is, is the road could, could be different. Yeah. Yeah. We can sometimes probably we need to step aside and walk around the wall. Yeah. So I think that's the, the, the biggest difference between Neo and other projects. You talk also about Neo being, um, you know, ready for the formal economy. So you have mm -hmm. different features like uh, being able to ID mm -hmm. uh, people and transactions. Yeah. Is, um, is there something you want to talk about mm -hmm. in, in terms of that? Well, how, how did you think about that? How did that mm -hmm. come to be? Um, regarding identity yeah. or digital identity, yeah. I think it's inevitable to, for, for blockchain to have digital identity and to link or map a uh, real world relationship between entities onto blockchain. Uh, let's look back at uh, 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 internet, mm -hmm. uh, back to maybe 1997. Uh, you don't know who is behind the screen, um, but gradually, uh, more uh, physical business, more traditional business, real economy are moving on to internet. So these days, everybody use their real name on Facebook or other social media. So it's inevitable that we will have identities on blockchain. Got it. Yeah. Now, are you hoping that blockchain will take over the world? And mm -hmm. as of now, what's the most welcoming uh, country or regulatory environment in the world for, for these kinds of technologies. And, uh, and I would love to hear also your take, especially on China, to compare what's going on in China. Sure. Mm. Uh, I don't think blockchain will take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of technology. And uh, some, most of the time, it's working behind the scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, regarding regulation, um, uh, different jurisdictions, it just varies very much, uh, like Malta and Japan. They are issuing license to cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, like in Singapore and Switzerland. They are these days they are kind of an offshore foundation center. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, cryptocurrency foundations or blockchain foundations are setting up entities in Singapore and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. is a very interesting uh, 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 jurisdiction. There are 50 states. They all have different laws. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to, to start a cryptocurrency business in U.S. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let's uh, go back to China. Mm -hmm. uh, chi Chinese government is very uh, welcoming or encouraging blockchain technology, the development of technology itself. But they are they are not they are uh, not welcome um, anything that fuels uh, speculation. Oh. So ICO and cryptocurrency exchange is illegal in China. So you can do you can do development of the technology itself, but you cannot do ICO, meaning uh, raising fund through uh, general public or run a cryptocurrency exchange in China. Got it. Yeah. And we actually have a, an interesting question from the audience. Someone asked, when do mm -hmm. you estimate that China may stop the ban on, on cryptos? Uh, China didn't, didn't ban crypto, uh, just like I said. Yeah. It banned ICO okay. and it banned uh, a cryptocurrency exchange. OK, got it. Yes. Got it. Okay. Very so hold, so uh, processing Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency or token in China is still legal. And if you do a trade or transaction between peer-to-peer, two-person, it is still legal. But if you want to run a business to facilitate trading of uh, tokens, it very likely is illegal. Got it. Yeah. Um, should banks be afraid of you? You know, mm -hmm. you, you, 
uh, blockchain is a disruptive technology that mm -hmm. takes out the middleman. Yeah. Will we see like banks going out of business or mm -hmm. also any other kind of business where yeah. blockchain is applied? Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think a bank, bank, it's the physical bank will disappear in maybe five or ten years. I haven't visited a bank in China for maybe two years. Oh wow! Yeah. So everything we do in China, we do everything with Alipay, with WeChat. So you can do that. You can use that to, to pay. Um, you don't really need to go to a physical bank, but banking will stay. Got it. But the banking will use new technologies, including uh, including uh, blockchain, including AI, different technologies. Got it. Um, privacy is something that's been you know um, in the news quite lately, mostly yeah. related to other social media and other aspects, but. You know, even with blockchain technology, a lot of a lot of people's information will be out there. It'll be on the blockchain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we protect people's information? How mm -hmm. do we make people comfortable using that technology? Um, blockchain is a is a you, blockchain is a way to maintain a ledger. The ledger will be synchronized across different uh, uh, nodes or players, so all the information are transparent to all the participating nodes. Mm -hmm. That's a big challenge for privacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but thanks to those uh, cryptography, like new cryptography schemes, we have zero knowledge proof. Uh, we have uh, homomorphic uh, encryption. Mm -hmm. We have uh, secure multi-party uh, computation. Mm -hmm. We can use those cryptography schemes to protect uh, people's privacy. You don't need. You, you can you can do a lot of things with encrypted data mm -hmm. uh, without releasing any uh, privacy, and also the. From a system, systematic point of view, uh, blockchain eliminates a lot of single point of failure. So all the, you don't need to pull every information onto one place. So even if a hacker hacked a place, all they got is uh, a limited, uh, a small part of the, or the privacy, private information. Got it. Yeah. Someone was uh, uh, wondering what the most promising applications are on NEO right now. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that you'd like to bring up? Um, there is a there is a game. Uh, it's a racing game. Uh, you can buy Ferrari. You can buy any fancy cars uh, with a game, and you can equip it with your own customized tire and engine or the, whatever you want. And then you can race with other people over the uh, all around the world. I think it's a very funny game. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, I was also wondering a little bit, um, what about people like me who kind of like middlemen? You know, if something goes wrong, I can always complain to the middleman entity mm -hmm. or a regulator. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, who's going to watch the watcher? Mm -hmm. You know, how are, you, are we going to keep the uh, blockchain community honest, mm -hmm. really, if something goes wrong? Um, there are many people in, in the blockchain community, they are anarchists. Mm -hmm. They don't like government. They they need zero government, uh, zero regulation. I think I I I I'm not an uh, anarchist. I think we are not ready for zero regulation. Yeah. So we still need some regulation to protect uh, some people. Um, in 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 China, if you want to do a uh, blockchain that is related to securities, mm -hmm. you are under you are, you are regulated by. Uh, the Chi CSRC, mm -hmm. the counterparty of SEC in US. If you want to uh, issue a, like uh, you want to do money business, you are regulated by PBOC or the central bank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, um, uh, I uh, found out that you are a dad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have I a daughter. Am. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about her and what you work with. Blockchain technology. I don't know if you've heard, but um, there's been a, a recent articles uh, showing that Silicon Valley parents are very concerned about their children's access uh, or, or use of iPads and all that technology. So, what do you tell your daughter about blockchain? Stay away. Uh, no, I <laughs> I explain to her what I'm doing, and she under she really understands. Yeah. Uh, there is a quote from a famous writer, mm. a science fiction writer, mm -hmm. uh, Douglas Adams. Mm -hmm. Uh, he said that uh, any technology that is invented before I was born, it's normal, it's part of the world. And any technology that is invented between uh, my age, 15, to 35, 
it's a new exciting technology and I may get a career uh, out of it mm -hmm. and any technology that is invented after I'm 35 mm -hmm. it's just uh, it's against nature <laughs> yeah so I, there are some people that think they think uh, AI is uh, will be a terrible idea it will distract you will uh, uh, distract the world uh, I, I'm not thinking so I think uh, people uh, human beings are really smart we will we have been, we have invented many new technologies mm -hmm. and we will figure out how to deal with it down the road got it yeah. got it um, I also uh, was thinking about a little bit uh, you know your, your, your company was founded in China, mm -hmm. but I know that mm -hmm. uh, some people sometimes mistakenly think it's just a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, what, what would you say to those people? Uh, we started from China, yeah. but actually these days uh, Neil has nine core developers. Uh, two out of nine are Chinese. Okay. The other seven are located in US, in Europe and uh, North America. So it's uh, quite, uh, I always say it's quite global mm -hmm. and we have uh, uh, developer communities in different countries in Japan in in South America in Europe so uh, l this month we did three hackathons in Europe mm -hmm. uh, one in Berlin one in Zurich and the other in uh, Notre Dame got it yeah um, because interestingly enough even though you're, you're a quite diverse company um, you started in an emerging market mm -hmm. I was wondering you know how you think blockchain can be um, transformative especially from frontier in emerging markets uh, elsewhere in Asia also in Africa mm -hmm. um, you know how can blockchain be applied in a way that, that could really especially help some of these countries develop yeah um, people say that blockchain is a disruptive technology um, I'm, I'm, I think that being disruptive is good but it doesn't mean you need to uh, crack down the old building and to, to build a new one to crack down the old building. Okay. So uh, with em emerging market, it's a, like a virgin land. Mm -hmm. You can do anything. You can build things from scratch mm -hmm. and you have the opportunities to do it right Got with it. Uh, most advanced technology. Got it. Yeah. I want to take a, a last uh, question from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which one? Will Neo hard fork next year and what is the roadmap for cross chain? Um, it's still under discussion. Mm -hmm. We have a plan to launch new 3.0 and we are still uh, discussing internally and also with the community whether we need to do a hard fork or even a new Genesis block with uh, new 3.0. So it's an ongoing topic. Got it. Yeah. All right. I've learned quite a lot. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you. That was a really thank interesting conversation. Much. It's been yeah. nice talking to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you.